you for the yes. first yes <laughs> time yes so good morning all viewers we are here to have another live session today with our uh, guest and uh, just a moment i am still not able to start my live session here okay so no problem we are going to have this live session right now we have with us dr nirmala rajagopalan uh, she is a practicing physician and uh, after completing her medical schooling she felt pleasure in dealing with hiv or uh, aids patient and uh, uh, she also dealt with patients who have addictions later she decided to start uh, with her own center caring for people with diabetes and hypertension so thank you ma'am for being here with us uh, and uh, acknowledging our call because this is so important for us so you being on our platform gives us really a uh, pleasure and uh, before uh, just just i would like to know more about you before we proceed ma'am okay so uh, thanks kanis for having me like i said this is the first time i'm ever do, going on youtube live and uh, it's been quite an experience uh, you i think you've been inundated with messages from me right through the week on how do we do it how do we go on and all of that yeah so and to all the viewers who have logged in thank you for taking the time off to uh, you know be part of this discussion because like kani said it's so important nutrition and how it affects children right uh, i basically have gotten into the field of nutrition i'm a doctor i've done my mbbs i've done my specialization in hiv medicine uh, but i am a person who has had metabolic issues right from childhood it started with obesity right from the age of 2 and uh, by the time i was about 20 21 years old i was already pre diabetic i also started having moderate levels of hypertension my cholesterol levels were high and as and obviously you can imagine i went from pillar to post trying to see how i need to solve them uh, medication of course was uh, always prescribed at some point of time people started saying you know you need to go in for surgery because you need to reduce weight uh, however what i felt i need to do is to explore natural ways of taking care of my problems uh and by just changing my diet around okay i don't usually use the word diet i say food style because diet always us think very negatively right so by changing the way i eat my food style i was able to lose weight i've lost 30 kg i'm not saying that i am not overweight any longer i still am overweight but for a person who is continuously putting on weight no matter what i've been able to arrest that process okay i like i said i lost 30 kilos my diabetes completely came under control i was able to get off medication uh some of the medicines that were being used for high bp also start also got reduced because of the kind of food style changes i made so when i saw this and it came with a lot of education i had to kind of go online and look at research papers i had to read books i had to talk to people who have been modifying their uh, you know uh, food style and uh, when i said when i saw that this is working for me then i said okay you know it's high time i started telling people about this uh, start educating people that you Uh, if you are on so much of medication for diabetes and your diabetes is still not under control there are hormonal issues which need to be corrected and for doing this the best way to do it apart from medication and medication doesn't always work well for all people is to do it through your diet um and so i got certified i uh, did my certification from the american nutrition academy and uh, from there i've started kind of coaching people on how to bring their weight under control or their diabetes under control autoimmune issues thyroid related issues yeah so that's my journey in brief wonderful dr nirmala because i i am damn sure that you are the right person who can guide us on nutrition now for kids because these days it has been so challenging to talk about nutrition you know kids are really not bothered about their nutrition use and we've seen so many other 
chronic diseases in children these days. So as you said, you have got that firsthand experience about your own uh, challenges that you had during your childhood days. Yes. And I simply love that food style instead of dieting. So yes. that was simply super because the slight changes in the language that we use, it becomes so easy for us to integrate all that and you know move ahead very easily. So okay. things turn out to be very simple sometimes. So I, I, I just love that. So moving on to certain questions uh, that I have regarding nutrition. The very first thing is when it comes to our children these days, it's very challenging to make our children uh, understand or eat healthy food. Mm -hmm. you know, it is for them because all these things, it's it's very uh, something crucial and they don't want to listen to all about uh, nutrition and all that thing. So how can we make our children eat healthy food? What do yeah. you think? Uh, so, Kaniz, like I said, my expertise is mainly with adults, but nutrition is something that uh, it crosses all kinds, it has to go across all kinds of ages, right? Now, mm -hmm. with any child, who do they learn from first? They learn from the parents, right? So, okay. we have to, as adults, set the ball rolling. We have to lead by example. Uh, simple thing. We can't tell our child, you know what, eat all your vegetables, but when the child looks at us, we are eating one roti or maybe half a roti sometimes and a little bit of dal on the side. Or we just have kichidi or we just have upma and we leave it. But do I think eat your vegetables, right? So if we don't follow what we are telling our children, obviously they are not going to learn the right thing. Uh, the second thing I would say is do not store junk food at home. Uh, again, it goes by uh, how we lead by example. Today, if you see in many homes, children have access, easy access to junk food. By junk food, I don't just mean the pizza and the burgers, okay? I also mean things like biscuits. I mean uh, things like having chocolates at home, ice cream at home. Children can just tell, you know, mama, I'm hungry. I uh, And um, I'll go have a biscuit. And they can actually have it because it's so readily available to them. <clears throat> when we were growing up, uh, we one is, I don't think most families stored as much of these processed foods as you see nowadays. Uh, so like I said, setting that example of letting children know that junk food is not readily available to you at home. If at all you are going to order in and things like that, it will be occasional. It will be maybe just on the weekend. So what are the messages we are giving them right from childhood? And um, yes, it's not easy for children to just accept what we are saying. But then as adults, we do have to set some ground rules. Okay, that would be point number three, ground rules that we set for them. Uh, example again, finish your vegetables. Now, I'm not saying that we give the child negative experiences. So it's not that we make sure that they finish a vegetable that they absolutely hate. That's not what I'm saying. We, they should not grow up with that kind of a negative psychology where food is concerned. But okay, if the child does not like green peas, for example, as a parent, we would need to explore what is the other vegetable that the child is ready to eat? Is the child ready to eat chickpeas or chana instead or rajma maybe, rather than forcing green peas on the child, which the child doesn't like, right? And then the fourth thing, of course, is the influence that the school has on our children. Today's children uh, know things like protect your environment. They know reduce, reuse, and recycle. Why do they know that? Because we teach them to this, uh, we uh, teach this to them in their schools, right? The same way, food plays such a big role in the growth and development of a child, but how much of attention is paid in the kind of nutrition-related information that we give children? And uh, for this, of course, it is the parents who can make the biggest difference by going to schools and addressing this issue within schools. Uh, school canteens today, again, junk food is available to the children, right? I'm not saying all schools. There are schools which are very, very, uh, you know, uh, responsible and they know what kind of food the child should have. 
but many other schools you have burgers being served you have noodles being served you have all kinds of cakes and pastries being served so the school also has a role to play the, if the mother is telling the child no junk food but junk food is available in the school then again we are sending mixed messages now i'll tell you why i'm saying this if you have heard of jamie oliver he is a world renowned chef he worked in i uh, he worked within the school system in the uk in order to change the way the school canteens were providing food for the children it's taken time but there are schools that have changed the kind of food that's given to children in school right so here what is the biggest force we have going for us it's the parents the parents are the voice of the child so the parents need to take this up and send petitions or work with the school board in order to bring about these changes so in summary how do we make our children understand what nutrition is all about first we lead by example the child gets the same message in terms of seeing what we eat and what the child is supposed to eat second stop this junk food culture somebody said junk the junk food and it's so true okay third would be that we have to have some ground rules and those ground rules will stand by the child as the child grows up maybe once they're a teenager they'll say okay who's going to listen to mama and dada i'll eat what i want but at some point of time this memory and this recall will come back and the child will start the child who then becomes an adult will start making responsible choices where food is concerned and finally the school the school systems have to be uh, cognizant about the fact that food plays an important role where the child's development is concerned well said uh, nirmala but uh, yes uh, it is a big work to be done behind i mean working with the school authorities to talk explain yes. them junk food to them and yes uh, also our children you know the authorities do something and it get, doesn't get implemented because the first school is home so how do i explain nutrition to my 6 year old child you know it's very difficult to get down to their level of understandings and uh, talk about such things true so very how true explain? Uh, see one is uh to kind of turn back the clock and go back to you know uh the 70s or 60s or 50s uh you know where people were eating healthier that's going to be a very long drawn process so we have to start addressing this issue in uh like have small victories where our children's uh, food and nutrition is concerned right uh yes. the first thing i will always say is lead by example you cannot tell the child you have to eat what i serve you on your plate but when it comes to your own dinner time you're ordering from outside or you're having a coke with your dinner all right so okay. lead by example and that really plays a big role the second thing is have age appropriate conversations with the child right so for example ria do you know that carrots have so much of vitamins and it's so good for your bones uh ria do you know eggs are good for you because it helps your brain it helps your bones it helps your muscles so if you want to be strong and grow up well also be able to you know pay attention to what they're teaching you in school you need to have an egg so age appropriate conversations the third thing that i would say is as the child grows older like 6 years and plus get them involved i don't mean girls only i mean girls and boys get them involved in small works along with you in the kitchen right they love being mamas or dadas helper so let them get involved in the process whether it is to just you know cut up your uh, leaves for the salad whether it is to help you knead the atta clean the rice and then when you lay it on the table and say you know what today ria helped me to make the salad ria is going to have a big smile on her face and probably also eat the salad without making a big fuss so yes. you- how we need to start communicating and also get them involved in the process because today uh, ruby many people don't know how to cook because food is so easily available from restaurants yeah. so this cooking culture also is going down and that does uh, finally have a big impact on our health definitely when they become a part of the process they understand it's so much it's not all that easy to make and eat so much effort is involved behind that uh, so i also say that 
if the child is introduced to this earlier the child begins to realize that it's not overly complicated because many people kind of get put off because they think cooking is very complicated yeah yeah and i usually what i do right now with my team also and my toddlers i start uh, using some other recipes like different uh, you know some uh, recipes of uh, different states so that you know they get some changes there Otherwise, exactly Exactly. The same and that flavor changes. It. Some good yes. spices you change that particular spices and uh, add something new to it. Then yes. definitely they'll have some better taste, right? Yes. So that's yes. how I do. Oh, your little one is there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's ill today. <laughs> so it's so, very nice. Uh, I like to ask uh, Dr. Nirmala that in case whatever. whatever now child is into addiction or sometimes you know child is into the junk food uh, kind of a thing how can we resolve this junk food problem that we have in our children um like uh, once they get addicted to these junk foods how can how can we help them to come out of this yeah so the question is where is the child getting this junk food from right as an adult we are obviously making it available to them now right from the time that the child starts having solid or semi solid food what is the kind of food that we have introduced to them if we are putting food from a box and then giving it to them obviously that's where the junk food culture is starting right uh, uh so like i said it has to be a policy within homes that we are not going to stock junk food now the problem is this definition of junk food okay a lot of people don't understand that even the biscuits that we give the child as a snack as a post school snack what do they have in it if you read the contents and I, and i keep repeating myself i think people people who know me are kind of fed up of me telling them this but read the labels on whatever food that you're buying uh the biscuits that you give your children okay they have sugar in them they have a lot of refined flour in them okay they have emulsifiers emulsifiers are literally like detergents because what they do is they make the food become smooth and they mix it all together right so these are all additives in the food and this is what we are getting the child used to so and once the child gets used to that then to kind of tell them no you can't have junk food it is going to be a challenge so right from childhood what are the tastes that we are kind of um you know ensuring that the child starts developing and liking it makes a lot of difference in the kind of choices the child will make later okay the second thing like i told you is the school system what is provided in the school if in school you have access to junk food and then you're telling the child no you cannot have junk food that's going to be very difficult for the child it's not the child who has to make those decisions we as adults are in that position of responsibility where we need to make those decisions for the child okay the third thing is uh, we need to have more policies which kind of especially advertising today on cigarettes you have labels which have a warning right that cigarette smoking is harmful for your health but do we see the, this kind of language on food products and yet there's enough scientific research that will tell you sugar is bad maltodextrin is bad um you know uh, high fructose corn syrup is bad but do we see these warnings on food we don't we have instead we have advertising where you show two children going in the night opening a cupboard taking out some chocolate or ice cream and having it without the parents watching and we all consider it cute right so this advertising culture also has to change there has to be i'm not saying we don't advertise but it has to be done responsibly because who is the viewer over there it's not just the parents it's the child as well right so again it has to start at the home it has to be repeated within the school and there also have to be policy changes so that our children are not uh, constantly bombarded by messages that junk food is actually healthy true i mean there are these are like subconscious messages going into their minds they don't realize and even we don't realize they are picking it all up and yes 
subconscious mind makes you do what is not right for you sometimes yeah so well very well explained uh, you very well explained this question but uh, why is nutrition so important in uh, children i mean yes in adults also but uh, why, why how should we explain this to them that it, it is so so very important yeah so uh, ruby if you see today all right uh, like i was telling kanis also when i was a child i had Uh, the problem of obesity i still am overweight because it's right from childhood a metabolic issue for me okay and that's what got me into nutrition in the first place uh, but today if you see the number of children in a classroom who are overweight and some are obese okay it has increased uh, if you see uh, the statistics in india there are newspaper articles where you see that childhood obesity is on the rise so what happens along with childhood obesity the child is then going to be more prone to developing diabetes okay and we see diabetes setting in earlier and earlier we have 15 year old children we have 10 year old children who have higher glucose levels in their blood we have children who have higher triglycerides we have children with fatty liver now all of these things diabetes fatty liver uh like i said high triglycerides all of these are issues that we see usually in older adults but today we are seeing it in children okay so what is the thing that's causing it it's not the environment it's not the pollution it's the kind of food that we are giving our children right now it's common sense when the child when the baby is conceived in the womb the mother knows i need to eat healthy because my baby needs to be healthy right uh, so we know that at a at a very very basic level we know that food is going to determine how our child grows the second thing is that once the baby is born breastfeeding right now breastfeeding Uh, it has gone through such a complex and difficult cycle where at one point of time people thought breastfeeding is not important today we know that breastfeeding is so so important for the baby's overall development because breast milk has all the nutrients that's required the carbohydrates proteins and all of that in accordance to what the baby can have and digest now while i was like i said when i keep uh, reading up about nutrition related stuff i also get myself certified from time to time so when i was doing that there was something that blew my mind human milk has something called hmo that is human milk oligosaccharides okay now these are complex carbohydrates guess what the function of this is it is not to give energy to the child human milk oligosaccharides or the hmo has no function of absorption for the child it doesn't give nutrition for the child what it does is it passes from the mouth of the baby right till the intestine and it provides food for the gut bacteria okay and the gut bacteria has a very big role to play in terms of the development of the brain because there is a gut nerve a gut brain nerve axis and this nerve axis is fed by the kind of chemicals that the gut bacteria produces and this totally blew, blew my mind because uh human milk is supposed to be nutrition for the baby but the fact that there is this component in the in the breast milk which is not meant for the baby's stomach but actually meant for the gut bacteria why because the gut bacteria plays a big role in how the brain of the child and how the nerves of the child develop the immunity of the child also develops based on how good the gut bacteria is the other thing is that uh today like i said uh there is so much of junk food available so sugary items uh food with a lot of refined flour in it okay these are all known to be inflammatory okay inflammation means swelling or at a very basic level swelling pain those kind of things are caused by inflammation but we are introducing it at a very young age in children so even though the child is active the child is playing outside and you know uh, studying well and all of that we are seeing inflammatory changes begin at childhood 
So that's why, like I said, there is a, in, an increase in the number of children with diabetes or being pre-diabetic, having a high cholesterol. All of these are inflammatory conditions, right? And uh, today, we also see an increase in the number of children falling within the autistic spectrum. We have, we have a rise in the number of children who are uh, challenged by things like ADHD. Now, these are all things that are connected with our brain activity, right? So if the gut health is not good, if we are going to keep putting inflammatory substances into the gut, and then how is the child going to kind of uh, be able to deal with these kind of um, problems or challenges, right? Yeah. So nutrition is not just for growth. It's not just for vertical growth, but it's also be because our mind and our brain has to function properly. Yes. That's amazing, uh, Nirmala. Uh, I mean, it's life, lifestyle diseases are also, I mean, actually the lifestyle diseases uh, that we suffer later on in our lives, they lifestyle begins in the early yeah. years. Yes. That yes. has to be introduced in the initial stages only. And yes, that is also very amazing that you just shared that there's a brain nerve that you said. So even the brain development is dependent on the gut. Yes. So it is very, very, you have to yes. eat mindfully also to be. So I, I, yeah, even I got to know about the secrets of uh, the best milk. I was really, it, it, it is really wonderful to have that particular knowledge. And uh, since we deal with the brain capacity or attention span and the focus in children, we have workshops also based on these things. So what I feel is, uh, I think children should have that capacity through their nutrition. They can in increase their capacity or brain capacity also. What do you say about this, Dr. Nirmala? Because the food food gives us a lot of, uh, you know, uh, and it, it, can it can enhance our brain capacities. That's what I believe. And most parents are not aware of because I have my own family members who just go out uh, and, uh, you know, they they go for an outing, parents are out and they just give some kind of ice cream, they keep it or store in the fridge and they just call the children. They say, once you return from school, take those ice creams and have it. So exactly. I was like, oh my God, what, what is happening here? This yeah. is not the way, right? So yes. I, I wonder if parents knew that the brain also the capacity of the brain increases and they are able to focus better and have that attention better when they have the right nutritious food i think mm -hmm. parents would never do that mistake yes so exactly what have you got to say about this dr nirmala oh i agree with you a lot kanis like i said a lot of us believe that we are giving healthy food to children right we don't know how to interpret uh, a label on food items. Yes, the labels are there, but how many of us actually read it? I'll give you an example. Recently, uh, we went out shopping, and uh, uh, my husband pointed out to me, "Hey, this uh, you know this hazelnut flavored cocoa," because he knows that I like hazelnut and I like chocolate. So, and it is written sugar free, right? So I was also excited. Oh my god, sugar free! So I can just like have it once in a while when I'm craving chocolate and things like that. I looked at it and it's sugar-free, no doubt. They've not put the white sugar, but they have used something called um, uh, sucralose in, uh, instead of sugar. And sucralose is harmful for the liver, right? And they also have uh, maltodextrin. So you have cocoa powder and then you put maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is like a white starchy lab produced starch. It's produced in the lab, okay? So... Obviously, then when you put that in milk, it's going to be nice and silky and, uh, you know, yummy to have. But is it actually a health food? And it's in the health food section, right? So we are being, uh, we are not being given the correct information where nutrition is concerned. All right. And uh, in terms of does it affect the brain? It does because we are putting inflammatory compounds into the children at a very young age. So if a child has, for example, and, you know, like uh, has trouble focusing, has trouble uh, sitting in a place and paying attention, right? I would advise the parent, first, remove junk food. Okay. Therapy, yes, has a major role. But along with that, even the food has a major role. So remove the junk food, remove the sugar, 
eliminate all this highly refined flours. I'm not saying we can do it 100%. Our, uh, our lifestyle has evolved into a junk food culture. So it is, like I said, we look at the small victories. But at least if 90% of the time we can avoid junk food, see whether the child's health is improving. Today, like I said, gut plays such a big role in our uh, brain development. But we see so many children having things like irritable bowel syndrome. They barely eat something and they need to run to the toilet. Why is that happening? Because the gut health is getting affected. Now, if the gut health is going to be constantly affected, will it not affect the brain health of the child, right? Uh, the other thing is this culture of chewing our food. Today, the children are in such a rush to reach school on time or even when they come back it's gulp down something and sit down for your study so this whole when we start depending on breakfast from a box where we just put it into milk and the child has it for breakfast we are cutting out fiber completely and like I said fiber is one of the most important things for the gut bacteria so that the gut bacteria can then provide the nutrients required for the brain but we are removing fiber because if you have fiber in the box, the food is not going to be preserved. Okay. Uh, so, and again, this the whole concept of chewing your food, making the food easily absorbable by the you know whole digestive system, that also the child is losing out on. So that's one thing. I would always say, if you are asking me about brain development and uh, the child's overall development, Start looking at avoiding junk food, uh, junk food. Make that one of the ground rules. Start even working with schools in order to introduce a policy where junk food is not going to be accessible within the school premises. And I know that there are schools doing it. It's not that there aren't schools that are doing it. The other, them, although. Yeah. The other thing that I would say is that uh, we look at wholesome nutrition so wholesome nutrition meaning the child would need carbohydrates carbohydrates come from grains whole grains comes from our lentils it also comes uh, to a great extent from the kind of vegetables that we eat the child needs protein protein comes from either eggs meat dairy the child needs fats fats come from ghee butter uh, ghee butter olive oil coconut oil the nuts that uh, you know are available to us so make sure that and apart from that like i said fiber and of course fermented food in our country uh, the easiest uh, way in which we can have fermented food is from yogurt or curds right and especially if you make it at home and use a2 milk in order to make the curds because a2 protein is more easily digested by our by our human digestive system. So make sure that you're making curds that's made out of A2 milk. So these are all the, the changes that we need to start considering when we want the child to have more wholesome nutrition. And when we look again, when today yogurt is available easily, but what do we do to the yogurt? We go and add sugar and flavoring and uh, put a few pieces of fruit again in the guise of it being healthy. But then you're not giving the child fermented food. You're giving the child desert when you do that. Yes. Very so nice. what is A2, A2 milk, uh, Dr. Nirmala? Can you just explain what so is that? A2 milk is more from the desi cows, okay? The okay. milk itself, uh, the, the protein in it is a little different from the easily available A1 milk. So if you look at the milk packet today, uh, it is written on the milk packet, whether it is A1 or A2. And A2, usually when the child is uh, a little, uh, you know, having already having a little bit of bowel disturbance, even in adults, um, a lot of times when we change from A1 to A2, we see a change even in their digestion uh, related issues. Yeah. Like I said, the protein is more easily digestible by the, by the human digestive tract. Got it, got it. Yeah, so we have those uh, pasteurized milk packs that we have yeah. right now. So maybe those, those are all A1 milk. Most of the time that's A1. So, and today, luckily, because again, there are enough people who are worried about nutrition. So A2 milk is available in the country. Mm -hmm. And A2 is from the indigenous desi cows, right? And most of these desi cows, they are left to feed in uh, you know uh, le left to feed on grass they're not given uh, only these concentrated uh, hormone fed food kind of thing 
True. Yes, in Delhi, it's easily available A2 milk. So there are vendors providing. Yes. We have also started using that only now. I didn't yeah. know the reason behind. We just explained. <laughs> it is expensive. Uh, it's good I for us. Then, yeah, but I, I too have switched long back. Once mm-hmm. I have my second son, I started using A2 milk only. Yes. That's yeah. really much. So when we talk about, uh, we deal with the mind. So a healthy uh, body can only, you know, accommodate a healthy mind. So all I knew about uh, immunity was like uh, when I was supposed to feed breast milk, there's something called colstrum I had heard. So if it is fed in the first three days, so you're imparting about 90 years of immunity to your child. It's the yellow fluid that is uh, Mm -hmm. Before before the milk comes out. Yeah. And... I just knew for children, I I was just aware of that. And immunity specifically talking about, I mean, uh, how can we increase uh, immunity by serving in the right kind of food? Like you rightly said, we need to have a a combination of carbohydrates, fats, proteins, minerals, vitamins, everything. So uh, how can we increase immunity through that? Yeah, so the thing is that uh, what we don't realize is that most of our immunity, 80% of our immunity comes from the gut, okay? We all think that immunity comes from the blood, but that is just responsible for 20% of our immunity. Most of our immunity is being generated, the the signals to generate immunity is from our gut. So if we eat the right kind of foods, like I said, fiber rich ferment and also fermented foods, then we are providing the right kind of food for our immunity to improve. Now, when we eat fiber rich food, that means we are looking at incorporating all of these things. So good carbohydrates, good vegetables uh, to give the fiber, good amount of uh, like nuts and seeds and things like that. So that uh, not only the fat, but even the fiber is available. So when we have a wholesome, well-planned meal, okay? That is what is going to provide the gut with enough fiber and also the option for fermentation so that there is enough of signals being sent to our blood and to our brain. So the brain for brain development, memory, uh, energy, for our blood, for immunity and other good chemicals like, uh, for example, serotonin. Serotonin is so important for our moods, right? Now, Mm -hmm. serotonin, What we don't realize is actually some of the chemicals responsible for serotonin is produced in the gut. It's not produced in the brain. Yeah. Yeah, So, yeah. Uh, Like I said, nutrition is a big, big, big mystery to most of us. And the more we get into it, then we realize, oh my gosh, you know, every, every now and then you get these eye openers and you're like, oh my gosh, okay, I didn't know this. Yeah. I knew this I think there were so many bulb on moments for me as well when yeah, I spoke to you. <laughs> Just now, yeah. I, I remember, so my uh, grandmother, you know, she used to give us, we used to go and tell her, uh, I'm having headaches. Suppose if I used to tell her, I'm having headaches. She was she used to come up with the churan. And she used to, give, she used to uh, just give us that. Ye khalo. And when we grew up, we used to tell her, Har baat ke liye churan dete ho aap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she used to say, Sab kuch peet se hota hai, you know that. And yeah. we used to make fun of her that time. And I can now relate to all those things. Exactly. You know, that is responsible for your brain, for your immunity, for your lifestyle. Everything is dependent on your stomach. Yes, yes. it is. And I think we as parents need to plan a lot for all these things because... Yeah. Pre-plan is very much important, I feel, right now, because the way you said about the gut and uh, how immunity, you know, this, uh, you can produce all your energy, only, your, you know, uh, whatever misconceptions that we had or some myths regarding nutrition also, you know, you had uh, broken it down. I felt uh, so many things we have to get in, you know, get into our learning system and understand it very deeply yes. about this. So what I would like to ask you, Dr. Nirmala, what as parents do we need to plan regarding our children's nutrition or our diet plan, I can say? What do we need to plan? You read my mind because I was just going to tell you that there's something that I want to add to whatever we have spoken so far. So, uh, see, let's not um, 
forget the fact that today in most homes both the mother and the father are working and fair enough i mean we need to have two incomes because of the kind of uh, you know costs that we incur uh, plus women obviously we are getting educated we are, i'm a working woman you are you both are working women and it is important that we have that balance in our lives one of the things that does happen because of the fact that both parents are working is that sometimes the stress with work is so much that we don't really have the time and energy to then focus on the food that's prepared at home so the good thing in india is that we have the option for where there is affordability to uh, look at having somebody who will do the cooking for us right so we can at least then tell them what we want made for the day uh, if that is if we don't have the time to cook the other thing is that um, today like i said if we also look at the amount of food that we spend on ordering in today there are so many apps you just press a button and food is delivered to your home right but uh, we look at okay one time bill is this much but during the month how much have we spent on ordering in for a family of four or six or whatever now instead of putting all that money in ordering in why not employ a person who will actually come work for one or two hours in your home and prepare the kind of meal that you have asked them to prepare because how much ever you try to order clean from a restaurant we don't know the quality of food that's being given to us we don't know if it's a food that has been uh, frozen for a long period of time and then being used we don't know what are the ingredients that go into these kind of foods if you're very sure then it's a different thing but most of the time we don't the second thing i would say is that today with the apartments and especially post the pandemic we or during the pandemic we saw a lot of women going into catering right home based cooks and uh, it helped it was such a blessing at a time when people were sick and people didn't know where to get good food from and all of that today if we live in a a uh, gated community or if we live in an apartment instead of ordering from a restaurant why not give uh, somebody in our own community that chance to kind of send us home cooked food okay now i'm saying this because this is practical very uh, very often when i work with even adults and when i see that a, a 30 year old for example has high cholesterol one of the first things i ask them is do you eat out a lot and one of the main answer that i get is by the time i get back from work i am so tired and exhausted i don't have the time to cook right so yes i order in and i try to order healthy but i do order in at least three or four times a week so if we are going to do that then plan your meal speak to somebody who can provide that meal for you okay so like i said even if you are cooking at home make sure that the plate has good carbohydrates good carbohydrates come from whole grain so you're looking as far as possible look at the unpolished rice like the red rice or the brown rice uh look at a good amount of vegetables because vegetables not only give you carbohydrates it also gives you fiber it also makes the child chew so the brain signals start you know uh, going and the brain knows what is the kind of nutrition that is coming into the body then and then the whole digestive system is then prepared to break down that food and start absorbing the food for the child's nourishment okay uh, apart from that we also need to have enough protein now uh, whether a vegetarian or a non vegetarian go and read up about what are the sources of protein that are available right and make sure that we include generous amounts of protein age appropriate weight appropriate i'm not saying you just like let the child only eat chicken or only eat egg i'm not saying that but there has to be a good quantity of protein on the plate as well and along with that the good fats that are used for cooking i am not saying that you need to give extra fat to the child but use good quality fat so use your ghee use butter use uh, coconut oil uh, wherever possible for the cooking right olive oil if required but our own desi forms of fat like i said ghee coconut oil butter these are good mediums for cooking so when you do that and add in one helping of yogurt every day uh, not the flavored yogurt 
okay when you do this you will one thing is when it's done systematically you will see that the child is getting enough nourishment and there will be various signs obviously uh, the child's health is good the child's immunity is good if the child was having problems with attention span you will see changes there okay if the child has been a little moody you will see changes there okay uh, the other thing that you will also see is that the child see when you're feeding the child good food the body is not going to crave junk and this is one thing that uh, i experience with everybody that i work with they tell me that oh, initially all of them are kind of upset because i'm telling them cut out sugar cut out refined flour okay it's not just the children it's even the adults who literally have a tantrum or throw a fuss when i tell them cut out sugar because sugar is so addictive ah that's another thing that we kind of fail to realize that sugar is as addictive as cocaine okay it is as addictive and because we don't know the kind of harm that sugar causes this addiction to sugar is not addressed within our society okay so when we give the child good food wholesome food even this desire to keep munching on uh, you know something that's a snack that kind of goes away the child is full with a meal and what kind of snacks do we give the child are we looking at biscuits are we looking at like uh, ruby said you know ice or you said there's ice cream easily available are those the kind of snacks we we are keeping at home or are we going to teach the children snacks are in the form of nuts fruits cheese okay when you want to like you again said when you want to give the child something interesting make a tikki at home where you use besan rather than uh, you know buying a burger make uh, cutlets at home using egg whites rather than ordering a pizza do things like that so that the child knows that there is a healthy way to eat and you start introducing that right from childhood a wonderful uh, nirmala like uh, it's been amazing for us also acha you said uh, you talked about whole uh, grain so what about uh, atta roti that we eat yeah so when we uh, the atta is fine as long as there is no gluten related issues the kind of atta is what matters okay if we are going to use atta that is like so fine and uh, like the minute you mix it it's like a pour pour water you get this gelatinous substance uh, which kind of resembles maida then you know that the atta is stripped of fiber now mm. uh, i know growing up you know we uh, used to go to the uh fl- uh flour mill and get the wheat ground okay uh-huh. and uh, we used to use that at home but today when we are using packaged atta at least when i make chapatis out of that at home for the rest of the family i do see the difference in the way that mixes with water versus what uh when you kind of buy the unrefined atta so you need that little bit of fiber in the atta right uh now how do we do this one is yes we need to start having people the pr- even the people who are producing the art should start realizing that they have a responsibility in what they are packaging and selling as good food right so and and if we consumers start being intelligent about what we buy and how we buy then the food industry will have to make you know a lot of changes in order to see that their products are being bought the more numbers who kind of say okay we are not going to buy junk we are not going to buy food which is just being marketed as healthy then the food industry will have to sit up and take notice they will have to make changes so then people like us have to create that awareness also yes and uh, like i said initially when i spoke to you and kanis i'm not a child nutritionist my thing over here is to make the adults think because mm-hmm. it is us who finally are going to pass on something to the children definitely and it's like uh, children if their minds are programmed for good food initially they'll continue to be growing yes. up as yes. aware adults and yes this is going to be a as a culture being passed on from one generation to the other very yes. nicely yes. so something i really loved was serotonin i mean there are techniques where we are using our, uh, some stories specific stories for serotonin and i was you know 
I um, I was amazed when I heard that it comes from the it is released by the gut. That was yes. really amazing for me. It is yeah. really by the gut because of the kind of protein that we see. Uh, protein there are you would know there are things called essential amino acids. Now tryptophan is one of the essential amino acid, and we can it's called essential because our body doesn't produce it. Our body is so magnificent that we produce a lot of things within ourselves which is required for our development, for our immunity, and all of that. But there are certain things which we get only from food, and tryptophan is one of those kind of protein. Uh, related amino acids which we get only from food and when this tryptophan goes into our gut then the gut starts producing serotonin so and which food product has tryptophan uh, a lot of our meats have tryptophan a lot of vegetables which are rich in protein like mushrooms avocado uh, broccoli they also will give us some amount of tryptophan yeah only thing is when we look at vegetarian sources of protein the quantity that uh, comes would be different from a non-vegetarian source of protein, but it's still there. Nature's already provided for that. That's really amazing. Really amazing. That's what even I find. You, you uh, specifically for a vegetarian legumes like our beans, our red kidney beans or rajma, all of them again have amino acids which are good for us. Okay. Rajma has that okay. I'm a pure vegetarian, so I was more concerned about it. Okay. Yes. So is it all right to add ragi atta or the other atta as a, uh, you know, the coarse uh, attas with the normal wheat atta? Is it all right? The chana atta? Uh, so like I said, uh, maybe we can't make all uh, the dramatic changes at one point of time. So if you want to add a little bit of the fibrous atta with the refined atta, not maida. When I say atta, it's atta, wheat, whole wheat atta. So mm-hmm. to do that, then uh, yes, start with that. Then uh, if you can progress on to reducing the amount of refined flour and using more of the, uh, you know, the uh, fiber containing flour, it's good too. And like you said, if you can add ragi and millets flour to your atta and use it, even that's an option. Yes. Yeah. That's been uh, an amazing, you know, session for us also. And yes, for our viewers also. Thank you so much, Nirmala. It was uh, an awesome interaction with you. And yes, uh, there were so many bulbon moments for us. And I hope uh, food and mind, you know, they are very well connected. We understood. And our viewers also got to know that. And yes, we look forward to learning more from you and having many more se- sessions from you. And today, we thank you from the core of our hearts. You came and you uh, just, you know, told us so many amazing things and educated us. And thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, yes, uh, we are going to have a workshop uh, coming up, coming up uh, on 1st December. And uh, yes, uh, all of all the viewers can join us to know more about the brain. This, we specifically we are working for the brains. That's going to be at 8.30 p.m. So looking forward to having you all with us. And yes, all of those who want to connect with uh, Dr. Nirmala. So we will give the details in the uh, comment box and you can connect with her also. Thank you so much, Nirmala. And it was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Thank you Kanis, uh, you know, for giving me the time to, uh, ex- to explain well, what, something that's very dear to me. Uh, especially when I see metabolic issues in children. And uh, like I had explained, I've gone through it right from childhood. And to see our children when they are struggling with it, uh, whatever I can do in terms of my part to to create awareness, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, Today, there are a lot of um, options available for parents. And I think if they are struggling with nutrition, they do need to get in touch with uh, a child nutritionist and see what needs to be done. It's it's not a matter of somebody giving you a diet chart. It's it's a matter of somebody giving you options, right? And then you know, you learn how to kind of appropriate these options into your daily living. And if that can be done, uh, we are providing a safer future to our children. Yeah. Safer, healthier and, you know, an easy life also. So many problems get resolved. 
just at the nutrition level only your breakfast lunch and dinner can solve so many problems exactly exactly yeah Thank, thank you, so you Dr. Deshma, for uh, being here with us. It was a pleasure moment and looking forward to having you in uh, some other sessions also. Thank you, Kani. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. So, Bye. Viewers, if you have any comments regarding uh, nutrition, uh, Dr. Nirmala would be willing to answer to all your queries also. Do let us know in the comment section whatever you have, your challenges in your uh, regarding nutrition, regarding food plan and diet. So we'll be there to help you out. Goodbye.